slowly over the centuries there, there came this darkening of the sacredness of creation. And it happened so gradually people didn't notice, but it became even more dominant in the, with the birth of science, the age of enlightenment in the 17th and 18th century and the, the birth of Newtonian physics, that the earth then became a mechanical object that was like clockwork that you could measure. I, its soul began to no longer be present. People no longer related to its soul in our Western culture. And um, I'm a great lover of Shakespeare. And in Midsummer Night's Dream, there, there, there is this trace in, in Oberon and the fairies and Puck of, of an inner world that is slowly vanishing from our, our consciousness. That the, the lovers in the wood, those of you who, who know the story, can no longer see the fairies, can no longer see Puck. Puck plays tricks and the f fairy king and the fairy queen are present, but they have become invisible. And it's this spirit world that is slowly receding from our consciousness in a way that a few hundred years earlier would have already been present. It's slowly vanishing. It's as if you like a light is beginning to go out to do with the, the magic of creation. And this is very poignantly expressed actually in, in a poem by Wordsworth who lived a couple of hundred years later, but he was a great nature mystic and he saw the light and the magic in creation and he also saw how it was lost. And I would just like to read this to you to, to give you this sense. It comes from his intimations of immortality. Not in entire forgetfulness and not in utter nakedness, but trailing clouds of glory do we come from God who is our home. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. Shades of the prison house begin to close upon the growing boy. But he beholds the light and whence it flows. He sees it in his joy. The youth who daily further from the east must travel still is nature's priest and by the vision splendid is on his way attended. At length, the man perceives it die away and fade into the light of common day. And this is actually a very real experience when a certain light becomes lost. It, it is like the, the secret that many young children can see their guardian angel, but they quickly realize that their parents can't see it. And so initially, they stop talking about it, and then they disbelieve it, and then they forget it. There's a line in one of E. E. Cummings, who is a great American mystic poet. It's from a poem called Anyone Lived in a Pretty How Town. And it says, and down they forgot as up they grew. And there is this forgetfulness of the sacred in creation that is Children can see, they can see the spirit world, they can see the... We each have a guardian angel that looks after us the whole of our life. Children can see it and we forget it. And, and this is like a, a subtext that has been happening over the centuries. It has been happening so subtly that we don't even know that it's gone. We don't... I always say we have forgotten that we have forgotten. It is a strange part of our human culture, this, I call it the burning of the books. It's happened quite a few times. For example, as you may know, this next year, 2012, has a particular significance in the Mayan calendar. And there's a whole tradition. They had a deep spiritual wisdom to do with time. And 2012 has a particular meaning. What, what is less well known is that they had enormous libraries, thousands of books in which they, they put all of their sacred understanding. And out of that, those thousands of books, three are left. They were so successfully destroyed by the Spaniards. And this has happened again and again. The library at Alexandria was completely destroyed, all the wisdom there that's gone. And it seems to be part of our heritage as, as human beings is to try to eradicate the consciousness of the past. In particular, 
the spiritual consciousness of the past. What was lost very specifically in Alexandria when it was burnt with all of the spiritual wisdom of, that, was, that had been brought to the library. The sacred within creation and the light of the sacred within creation and our relationship to the light of the sacred within creation has been eradicated, has been censored from our consciousness. It has been censored so successfully that we don't even remember it anymore. It is not even in the stories of our mythology. You find it hinted at in the poem of a nature mystic. But it has gone. We no longer have a relationship to the inner worlds. And what people don't realize, because it, we don't even know they exist really in the same way, is that the effect that has had on the inner worlds.